Hey guys, and welcome to the latest tutorial from Just the Basics. Now, if you're anything like me, you might have just watched the latest trailer for How to Train Your Dragon 3, and you're feeling pretty pumped. So, today, let's look at creating some How to Train Your Dragon logos in Blender. So, to get started, let's hit File and select a new project. Now what we can do is straight away hit X or delete to remove our default cube. Once we've done that we can hit Shift A and add in some text. R, X, 9, 0 and Enter will rotate that text for us 90 degrees on the X axis. Now we can hit Tab to enter edit mode and replace it with the logo or words of our choice. In this case I'm going to type in how to train your Enter to drop it down Dragon. Now, the next thing we can do is we can go over to our font settings over here. Under paragraph, select horizontal alignment, center, to center our text. And now, we can go and change the font to one which is more dragony. And the font I'm going to be using is actually one called Molot. Now, I'm going to provide a link so you can download this. It's molot.otf and use the same font. So, double clicking that, you can see it's loaded nicely. Now, I'm going to extrude this by something like point. 1, 6, that looks pretty good, and I'm going to set the shape fill from both to none. Now I'm going to change the bevel depth to 0 0.01, and this has just created for us the nice outer layer that we're going to use as the more metallic part of our logo. So now let's hit Shift D to duplicate that, and just hit 0 and Enter to make sure it stays in the same location. Now let's go ahead and change the fill value on this from none to both and change the bevel depth to zero again so right there you can see that we've got our basic text already created the next step is going to be transforming this from being text to being an actual mesh which will enable us to apply textures and edit it with a bit more variety to do this we can go ahead and select one layer then hit alt plus c and select convert to mesh from curve a word of caution once we have done this, you will not be able to edit your text anymore. So with that um, in mind, let's go ahead and convert that and then select our inner layer and hit Alt plus C for that and select Convert to Mesh from Curve. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and give this some materials. The materials I'm going to be using are both from a website, Polygon.com. I've talked about this in my previous videos, but you can access both of these uh, textures by uh, clicking on the links and signing up for a free 30-day trial to the website. Now, I'm not sponsored by this website, I sure wish I was, but I just find that it provides high quality textures that are very simple to use. You'll see here I've got what's called the Polygon Material Converter. I'll include a link on to their website on how to set that up as well because it's free and makes setting up textures super easy. In this case, all I need to do is go ahead and select the folder icon, then navigate to my texture folder and click Accept. This has just loaded up all the textures that I've got uh, or purchased from Polygon. In this case, the two I'm going to be using is Fabric Leather Red 001 3K and you can see that there, I'll put a check next to that and also Metal Aluminium Worn 001 3K. I'm going to load those two materials in. Now they've both successfully imported into Blender. I can select my top layer which is going to be the metal layer on this text and hit tab toggle A to select everything, then U, Smart UV Project, and then I can click this little drop down menu next or under the materials tab and select Metal Aluminium Worn, and then I can select the interior layer of my text, hit tab, toggle A to select everything, and U, Smart UV Project again. And once again I can select this drop down menu and this time select Fabric Leather Red. So now if I hit Shift Z to switch to rendered view, you'll see that both materials have been applied successfully. So now let's give our text the kind of curve that the actual logo has in the movies. To do this, we'll hit Shift A and drop in a curve and a Bezier curve. Sorry about all the dogs in the background. Everyone must be out walking their dogs now. It's a nice sunny afternoon, so I don't blame them. So if we go ahead and hit R, X, then 1, 8, 0, we can rotate that 180 degrees along the X axis. So what we can do now once we've rotated that is we can hit 7 to go into top down view and that's 7 on your number pad and then hit tab to enter edit mode. And let's go ahead and just drag these 
two side vertices out to the length of our logo text. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these different control lines, I'm not sure what the actual name is for them, and just to give it the nice curve. I think something like that looks pretty good. Now I might even just scale that up a little bit more, and drag it back a little. Now to apply this text to this curve, we can select one of any layer really, and go to the spanner or the modifier settings, and select add modifier, curve. Now I'll see a little cube under this column called object, press that cube and select Bezier curve. Now we can do the same with our second part of the text, selecting a cube and selecting Bezier curve. Now let's make sure we've got both texts selected by holding shift and right click and then drag them back to the center so that they can be nice and evenly curved on the right and left hand side. That looks pretty good. So now if we look at that, I think I'm happy with that. It has just that nice little curve to it. But you're probably noticing that our geometry is a little bit deformed. The reason for this is that our Bezier curve is trying to def or bend very basic geometry. If I select our main fill layer and hit tab, you'll notice that there's not too many faces here. We can fix this problem simply by pressing W, subdivide, I'm going to subdivide by something like 10 cuts. You probably won't need to do it this much, but I like to just be safe. Okay, now we can select our outer layer and hit tab, W, and I might just subdivide this one by 5, and I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay, awesome. That looks pretty good. So now, let's go ahead and give us some lighting. Once again, I'm going to be using a free add-on. This is the Pro Lighting Skies demo. You don't have to use this. In fact, I might even show you how to set it up without using it. The reason I use this is, once again, it's just super simple. The click of a button and our lighting is pretty much completely set up. But let's go ahead and look at how to just uh, use any kind of lighting in the, for that matter. So the best lighting is an environment texture. So if under surface we change it from the color from just being RGB to environment texture, we can go ahead and open up a HDR image. Now I'll provide a link to an awesome pack of eight free HDRs you can download, not very big um, in file size either. And you can select one of these if you like. The one I think works rather well was probably number two, just load that in. And if I go ahead and hit Shift plus Z to render, you'll notice that it's provided a lovely, you notice it's provided a lovely warm lighting, like something we'd see in actual How to Train Your Dragon movies. So let's just maybe change that strength from one to three. That looks pretty good. What we can do now though, is we can go ahead and start setting this up to be rendered. To do that, we might even want to be able to have some more control over our world. Lighting, our environment texture that is. So I've actually got to give some credit to Dorian Zagragan. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that properly. But he had a fantastic tutorial on how to rotate a HDR by using an empty in Blender. So this is going to be the same method he detailed. If we switch uh, from 3D view to node editor, hit N to remove that panel, T to remove this one. What we can do is just down here, we can select world settings, and then we can go ahead and hit shift A and drop in a texture coordinate. This might be just if we want to rotate the lighting of our scene. And I'll explain why that's useful in a minute. We can just drag object into vector. Now back here in our main scene, we can hit shift A, add in an empty and select sphere. Now let's scale it up a little bit. So now, if on back over here in our texture coordinate, we hit that little cube and select empty. Whenever we rotate this sphere now, which I just go to rendered view, you'll notice it will rotate the lighting of our scene. Which is really awesome because sometimes when using HDRs, if I go to camera view, you can see it's projecting a 360 degree image. So by rotating that, I can affect where the different lighting is being cast. And for something like this scene, I probably want the main lighting to be illuminating the front of the text. So that looks pretty good. What we can do now is hit 1 and then Control alt 0 to lock our camera to that position. I'm going to hit N to bring up 
my um, transform properties and click lock camera to view and enter remove that and I'm just going to try and center my text so it looks nice okay that looks pretty good now the last thing I'm going to want to do is go to my render settings under film select transparent so the background is transparent or see-through and then in our um, render layers just select denoising make sure my samples are up high enough so I might have something like 100 and now we're pretty much ready to render so let's go look at how we can composite this to make it look even more cinematic so by going over here to our uh, 3d view panels we can switch from default to compositing and click use nodes and backdrop now scrolling out a little we'll drag our render layer out and we'll just click render first of all that will just take a minute or two so now that that's rendered what we can do is we can go ahead and hit shift A and add in a alpha over node this effectively enables us to work with different layers which is really handy what we're going to do to create the kind of fire explosion effect from the films is we're going to use a super cool free explosion special effects and VFX um, element pack from Premium Beat. It's called Detonate. There's a link to the uh, pack in the description, and also a, li a link to the, and also a link to the explosion we're going to be using. So what we can do is hit Shift A and drop in a movie clip node, and go and navigate to that explosion. So in this case, I'm going to be using the explosion. What's it called? Explosion Fireball Massive. So double click on that to load it in, click or click open clip and then drop that in the bottom panel of our alpha over. So if we change our view or by hitting control and shift on whichever node we like we can set a viewer node so we can see what's happening. I just change the pre-multiplied up to 1. Now what I might do is hit shift A and add in a scale node. I can use this to scale up our fireball and I'm going to scale it to 2.5 by 2.5 okay that's awesome now if I just go along in the timeline you can see our explosion building one thing I didn't quite like about this explosion was this black lines around the edge so I can fix that quite simply by hitting shift A and searching for a difference key we'll just drop this in here and change our difference color from white to black now let's just drag up the tolerance Oh, the fall off, sorry. I should say the fall off a little bit. And that removes that nicely. Now, I might just change the factor down a little bit so it's slightly transparent. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, the next thing we might do is go ahead and hit Shift A and add in another alpha over. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a black backdrop for my How to Train Dragon text. So I'm going to drag that color down and maybe even make it not fully black but maybe just a little bit blue for something different okay that looks pretty good now let's go ahead and add a glare note this is going to be pretty cool because it's going to enable us to add some nice glow cinematic glow well, everything's got to be cinematic so let's change this from streaks to fog glow and change the threshold down a bit now let's just hit control shift on this note to preview that and that looks pretty good maybe even drop the th threshold down just one more to make it have that nice cinematic glow. So if we look at that, yep, that's looking pretty good. Now, what we can do is go ahead and hit Shift A again, add in another alpha over, and hit Shift A, and drop in a, another image node. Now, what we're going to be using here is really awesome because it just makes it look super cinematic, and that's a cinema border. So if we drop that on top, and just go to see the view of that you can see it's looking pretty cinematic let's just change the pre-multiply up to one to move that white line okay nice Got a cool cinematic border now I think the explosion might be a little low so I might just add in by hitting shift A again a translate node this effectively enables us to position whatever effects we apply it to so in this case we've applied it to the fireball and I want to move this up on the Y axis so that it's kind of covering my logo more but maybe that's too much so I move that down a bit okay 
that looks pretty good. Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. So now I might change the threshold down a bit more on this glow because I really want it to pop. Okay, that looks nice and fiery. And what we can even do on top of this is we can go ahead and add in a contrast or brightness, sorry, contrast slash brightness, bright slash contrast node. And we can use that to give some contrast to our image if we like to make it a bit more darker. Maybe it's not what we're quite looking for though. So we might change it back to one. Okay. So it might be too much. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe a bit too fiery. But anyway, that's cool because we can play around with that. And what I did to actually animate the text, we can manually animate it by using keyframes, which is rather simple. But what I did in this case was I just got my render layer and I just added a scale node. And what I did was I just found a frame where the fire covers my text and I just dropped that down to 0 0.0 or 0.9 and then hit right click to insert a keyframe. And what I was able to do then was then go to something like frame 110 roughly there and change that back up to being one by one and lock in another keyframe. And it just kind of brought in this um, illusion of the text growing bigger as it does in the actual movie which worked satisfyingly enough for me. Now, perhaps you don't want it to appear till the explosion happens, like me. So what you can do is just find um, the frame where you want it to disappear. Maybe, let's just say frame 57 or 56. And let's just go ahead and change the scale to 0 by 0. And let's lock those keyframes in. So now, if we move along, our text will grow rapidly and appear behind the flames. Finally, to render it, that should be everything for our special effects applied. What we can do to render it is go change it from PNG in our render tab to FFmpeg video and then under encoding change it from uh, the container Matroska to MPEG4 and select RGB. Then of course select your desired output location. Oh and one other cool little tip to make it look a little bit more cinematic is if we hit Shift A and add in a lens distortion effect. This can kind of just create that extra bit of realism, I think. And just change the dispersion up to 0.05 and click enter. So if we just look at that, you see it kind of disperses it as if it was filmed on an actual camera lens. And I think that really seals it for me. Sells, sells it, I should say. Okay, and that's pretty much everything I can think of. That's just the basics of creating a How to Train Your Dragon logo in Blender.